seven of nine for some reason when she uh, when she defected from the Borg and Voyager, she never mentioned this kind of technology. Maybe she, as a as a specific drone, didn't wasn't aware of it. Just a quick reminder before I start this week's episode that you have the power to help me produce this content. If you head over to patreon.com forward slash d20, you can make a small a monetary pledge to uh, to send me a couple of bucks, a couple of dollars every month, and that will go a long way to helping me keep the lights on while I'm producing these videos. If you're unwilling or unable to do that, there are other ways you can help. You can like, you can comment, you sub- can subscribe, um, you can share this content on uh, social media anywhere you like, or getting more eyeballs on the content helps, and that leads to hopefully more uh, more patrons and more subscribers in the future. All right, let's get on with it. Greetings, I'm Rear Admiral Owen Swart of the Federation Starship Dauntless. And today we've got another episode of Star Trek Apologetics, the series in which I try, uh, attempt to address apparent inconsistencies in the canon of Star Trek. And today's question I found on the uh, Daystrom Institute subreddit, and it goes like this. How did Borg drones assimilated at Wolf 359 get back to the Delta Quadrant? I'll be, the question goes into more detail about it, but I'll just explain what uh, what the context is there. Uh, the Borg, of course, are the race from the Delta Quadrant of the galaxy. That's the opposite side of the galaxy from where we are. Um, they are an extremely sophisticated race, technologically speaking. They have an, uh, a proclivity towards expansionism. They, they try to expand their territory, and one of the ways they do that is by assimilating the races that they uh, encounter. They inject the, the individuals of the races they encounter with Borg nanoprobes, little microscopic machines, which then convert those people into Borg drones. The Borg have a, a hive collective mind. They're all if essentially one big person. Um, so all of these new assimilated individuals all become part of this this uh, this collective. And that's how they uh, increase their ranks in terms of physical individual uh, bodies and also how they, they acquire new technology. They don't do it through research and development like everybody else does. They find a race that has the technology that they want and they assimilate them and thus uh, incorporate all of their memories and knowledge and understanding and, and sometimes physical equipment too. Now, uh, Wolf 359 was a, a well-known battle in Star Trek. We saw it at the, uh, in the, the two-part episode, uh, The Best of Both Worlds, which was the, the end of Season 3, beginning of Season 4. It was a, a cliffhanger two-parter in which a, a Borg ship um, made an attack on Federation space. I, I, I use the word attack, not an invasion, because it was not a full-scale invasion. It was just one ship. It was a ship called a Borg Cube. So the Borg use these enormous vessels, cube-shaped vessels, which are colossal, uh, far larger than any Federation starship has ever been, uh, with tens of thousands, possibly millions of crew on board. Um, and they have uh, an array of weapons that the Federation simply can't match. They're, they're colossally powerful. And to put it in context, the, the combat effectiveness of a single Borg cube is roughly equivalent to the entire Starfleet. Uh, without some kind of special trick up their sleeve, Starfleet simply can't uh, hope to take down a Borg cube unless they're just they're all present and that's kind of what happens at Wolf 359 so a a single Borg cube is detected penetrating Federation space it attacks a couple of outposts around the the perimeter of the Federation and then starts making a beeline for Earth after assimilating uh, Jean-Luc Picard. Um, they have an encounter with the Enterprise-D. Picard is is captured and assimilated and they use his knowledge to understand that Earth is the most uh, uh, strategically important planet in the Federation, so that's where they're going to go and attempt to assimilate. Starfleet then attempts to repel this attack by mounting a, a, a resistance at the, the Star Wolf 359, which is where they decide they're going to deploy all available ships to go and attempt to intercept this Borg cube. Uh, the cube pretty much lays waste to the fleet. Uh, there are thousands dead. There are a few survivors. Uh, Captain Benjamin Sisko, we know later, is one of the survivors of the Battle of Wolf 359. His wife, Jennifer, however, was not so fortunate. Um, but most of the, the people there were killed. Many ships were destroyed. Thousands of people killed. And then the, the Borg continued to Earth, where they had one final confrontation with the Enterprise, and the Enterprise was able to trick them into self-destructing. I know that's a spoiler, but come on, this episode is decades old now. You really should have seen it if you haven't already. All right, so that's that's what happens. But then later on in Star Trek, we have Voyager, which is traveling through the Delta Quadrant, and they encounter the Borg on various occasions. And some of the, the drones that they encounter, or former drones, people that have been liberated from the Borg Collective, inform them that they had been assimilated at Wolf 359. Now, we saw that Borg cube, or at least 
we we saw what we thought was that Borg cube that had assimilated all of those people at Wolf 359 uh, self-destruct, blow itself to pieces at Earth. So how is it possible that there were Borg drones who had been assimilated at that battle, somehow survived that ship self-destructing, and then made it to the Delta Quadrant later on where Voyager could encounter them? So this is an interesting question, and there's no clear answer in canon. But I've come up with three possible answers to this question, which I think might be worth considering, and, and could go some way towards explaining how it worked. First is that is what I call the multi-ship hypothesis. Although we're only aware of there being one Borg ship uh, present during the attack, it's conceivable that the Borg had more than one ship around. There might have been a second cube, perhaps, or uh, or perhaps one of their smaller uh, support vessels. The cube, the Borg do use other kinds of ships from time to time, not only these giant cubes. We've seen uh, spheres, which are considerably smaller than cubes. Uh, we've seen little scout ships, which are smaller still. They're, they're, they're even smaller than your average Federation starship. It's possible that there had been some of these other support vessels around um, that had loaded people off of the, the said, assimilated drones off of the Borg cube at some point during its journey, and then they had hightailed it back to the Delta Quadrant before the cube self-destructed at Earth. Um, this is conceivable. We know that the Borg have transwarp technology, which means that they have the capacity to travel many times faster than, than ordinary warp speed. So it's possible that the Borg cube could have been could have met up with sister ships along its journey. There were definitely gaps in the Borg cube Borg Cube's trip, where there were no uh, Federation starships close by, close enough to be able to uh, monitor it with short-range sensors. They were watching it with long-range sensors only, and long-range sensors are not as reliable as short-range sensors. So it's conceivable that a smaller ship dropping out and back in, and then going back into transwarp could have gone undetected during the course of the Borg Cube's journey. Another possible hypothesis I have is what I call the exotic technology hypothesis. So, as I said, the Borg have assimilated many uh, civilizations throughout the galaxy, and um, although we, there are certain technologies that we see them using over and over again, um, their warp drive, their transwarp drive, their cutting beam, tractor beam, uh, force fields, all of those kinds of things, we see them using uh, regularly. Um, it's possible that the Borg have other technologies at their disposal that they perhaps use less frequently, maybe because there's a high energy cost to using them or because the equipment necessary to, to, to use the technology is hard to come by and they're not able to easily replicate it or something. There might be some other kind of interesting technology that the Borg have access to that we simply uh, aren't aware of. Um, now, we know that in the Delta Quadrant and in various other places in the galaxy, there are things like really long-range uh, transporters, the Sakara interjectors, the uh, Iconian gateways, these things are around in the galaxy. Now, we don't know whether or not the Borg actually assimilated those races or any individuals of those races, but it's conceivable that they might have. The, the, there were Icon Iconian gateways seeded throughout the galaxy. It's, it's not at all unlikely that the Borg might have happened upon an Iconian gateway somewhere in the galaxy and assimilated that technology. It's possible they might not be able to replicate it easily, so perhaps it's not on every ship. But maybe, just maybe, the, the one ship that they said to attack Federation space had one of those gateways on board. And while it was flying uh, on its way to Earth, they simply opened up their Iconian gateway, which is essentially a, a person-sized wormhole, and then sent people through the gateway to a Unimatrix back in the Delta Quadrant. A Unimatrix is a, a Borg star base. Uh, it's like an artificial planet almost. So that's the exotic technology hypothesis. The only evidentiary support we really have from this is this one line from Star Trek First Contact. But that ship and all the bog on it were destroyed. You think in such three-dimensional terms, how small you've become. Now, it's not really clear what the Borg Queen is saying there. The, the Borg Queen, incidentally, is one of the Borg drones who uh, was uh, aboard that Borg cube. We've seen her aboard that cube, but somehow managed to survive that incident, and we encounter her again later in the Delta Quadrant, and back at Earth as well. She seems to be able to move freely uh, between the quadrants, despite having been destroyed at least twice that we know of. So what this suggests is that there is some kind of interesting technology, some kind of exotic technology that we're not aware of that the Borg have access to that uh, is simply not available to Federation technology. And we haven't been able to, we haven't detected it. Seven of Nine, for some reason, when she uh, when she defected from the Borg and Voyager, she never mentioned this kind of technology. Maybe she, as a as a specific drone, didn't wasn't aware of it. We don't know. This is an unanswered question and we have very little support for it. But it at least it fits the facts.
The third hypothesis is the one that I prefer, and that is the lifeboat hypothesis. And it's something of a, a combination of the, of the first two. Now we've seen that Borg cubes uh, um, sometimes carry smaller support craft on board. Uh, we saw in Star Trek First Contact, a second Borg cube attacked Earth, and that Borg cube contained a smaller ship called the Borg Sphere, which was ejected during the final battle and then traveled back in time. Um, time travel, incidentally, is one of those exotic technologies on the list of, of things that the Borg might be able to use to evacuate people to the Delta Quadrant. But let's not get derailed. Uh, the smaller ship was carried on board the, the Borg cube and was able to eject as needed. It's conceivable, I think likely, that the Borg cube that attacked Earth the first time was also carrying a Borg sphere on board. And that at some point during its journey, probably at some point between the time when it left Wolf 359 and the time where we see it arrive in uh, at roughly Saturn's orbit, where it encounters Starfleet's planetary defenses, um, somewhere in that gap, it launched that Borg Sphere with a bunch of assimilated drones on board and probably the Queen as well. And that Borg Sphere engaged its transwarp drive and headed back to the Delta Quadrant. That to me seems the most likely explanation because it has the most direct on-screen support. It doesn't explain the weird thing that the Queen had said in, in Star Trek First Contact, but it's not even clear that she's necessarily telling the truth. So that's my explanation for how those Borg drones arrived back in the Delta Quadrant. We don't have any explicit confirmation of on-screen canon of, of how that actually worked, but uh, we have three relatively good explanations one which i think is the best one and uh, and that's good enough for me that's uh, that's usually the best we can hope for in star trek apologetics hopefully at some point in the future we'll get some kind of on-screen confirmation of one of these three or perhaps it's something that hadn't occurred to us but uh, i think we're th this mystery has been solved at least to my satisfaction and i hope to yours as well if you have any more questions that you'd like me like me to address, if there are any uh, topics you'd like me to talk about in future episodes of Star Trek Apologetics, uh, you can drop a question in the in the comments below. You can also find me on the D20 Discord. You can find me on Twitter, on Facebook, all kinds of places. And um, as you've noticed, I'm constantly scanning the, the Daystream Institute subreddit uh, for these kinds of questions too. So if you've got something, you can drop your question in there. The other guys in the subreddit will, will uh, address it then and there in text, and I'll probably make a video about it later. All right, that's it for now. Swat out. Mm -hmm.